going on, Saints fans? Hope y'all are having a wonderful day. The New Orleans Saints Week 8 Injury Report just dropped, so we're going to dive into it. We filmed this video as a part of our live show on Wednesday afternoon, so if you want to be a part of the fun and you want to see these happen live and actually get the most up-to-date information, I encourage you to subscribe. But if that's not reason enough, guys, this is embarrassing here. We are on a race. Seeps and I, producer Patrick Seatman, y'all remember him, we... we Hung out with him quite a bit. Producer Patrick Seatman and his channel Vikings Now are kicking our ass. This is embarrassing. We at one point had 2,000 more subscribers than them. And now they are lapping us, laughing in our faces, and saying, nah, nah, you guys stink, Minnesota Miracle, nah, nah, nah. Hey, we made Pigs Fly happen once against the Vikings. Let's make it happen again. Subscribe today, and let's beat Vikings now on the race to 40,000 subscribers. Come on, help a brother out. If you bleed black and gold and you hate losing to a poverty team like the Vikings, hit that sub button. All right, we're gonna, how this is going to work, I'm just going to show you guys the injury report. We're going to dive into it, going to just kind of quickly list all the names, all the designations, and then after that, I'm just going to give you my opinion, give you my take, and kind of what I think. <coughs> Excuse me. So first name, Derek Carr, he did not participate due to an oblique injury. And the only other player on the Saints side of things that did not participate was Nick Saldaveri, who's been dealing with a shoulder injury. Now, we have some good news around Cesar, Lu Cesar Ruiz, Lucas Patrick, uh, and some other players. They are both limited participants. Pete Werner, also a limited participant. So too is uh, Chris Olave, Colin Saunders, Taysom Hill, Alvin Kamara, Cedric Wilson, and Ju Juwan Johnson. All of them are limited participants. Alvin Kamara today actually uh, revealing that <laughs> he's been dealing with a broken hand since the Chiefs game. So yeah, Alvin Kamara's got that dog in him. Now, another name to monitor... Death, taxes, and another center getting hurt. Connor McGovern has a back issue, but he was a limited participant. Really good news for Spencer Rattler and Marshawn Lattimore, who are on the injury report. They were full participants today. Spencer Rattler dealing with a little bit of a hit pointer. Marshawn Lattimore has a hamstring issue. So really good news for, in general, for the New Orleans Saints as a whole. However, I will add this. You got to get, like, this is nice. It's good news, but we still need more. We, we, we still need to see better health. We need to see more players available. We need to see some of our key players available because, you know, just like just to name some of the guys on the injured reserve list, Eric McCoy, Tano Passigno, Rashid Shahid, Paul Sinadibo, Will Harris, Ryan Ramchek, Justin Huron, Nefi Sewell, Rajon Wright, Shane Lemieux, Cameron Peterson. That's three, six, nine, ten, eleven names on injured reserve. So sure, it's nice to have all these guys limited or fully participating. I do think it's good news. But we gotta get healthy. We gotta get back on the field and we have to have this team be a a healthy, a healthy squad so that way we can see the best possible production from a football standpoint. Now, if you want this team to get healthy, I need you to do one thing for me. Just give me a hoot at in the comment section. Let's get this vibes turned around. Let's get the mojo switched. Let's get everyone feeling a whole lot better. As John Gruden say, I need you feeling nicey. So hit that thumbs up icon, type hoot at, and let's get this team healthy right now. Hey, and if you want to get your dog healthy, if you want to have a puppy that's a little bit happier, a little bit healthier, just overall got more energy. You got to check out Ollie. It's an awesome dog food. I put my dog dude on it, and I think you should do the same thing. Today's episode is brought to you by Ollie. Clean, fresh nutrition for your dog. Right now, Ollie is offering a fantastic deal to let your pup taste test a personalized meal plan, and you can actually get 60% off your first box of meals when you use promo code CHATSPORTS at Ollie.com. With no harmful fillers and no preservatives, Ollie is made in the U.S. kitchens with ingredients carefully sourced from trusted growers and producers around the world. Here's how it works. You fill out, <coughs> excuse me, you fill out Ollie's 30-second quiz, and they'll create a customized meal plan for your good boy or your good girl. 
Ollie then crunches the numbers and recommends the right recipes for daily portions for your pup. And for any first timers, Ollie will send out your pup's first box with two weeks worth of meals and a guide of how to gradually switch them over to their new diet. You can also customize your plan with the three different options to choose from, which are a full fresh plan, a fresh topper plan, or a mixed plan with their freshly baked recipes. Now, we've shown some pictures of some other dogs, and we've also shown some pictures of my good boy in here with Duke. Dude, I've talked about it before, but ever since we put him on Ollie, he has been happier. He's been healthier. His tummy issues, not nearly as much of a problem. And hey, he's a big fan of the uh, sweet potato meal that he gets with Ollie. I mean, he goes to town. I'm not kidding you. Like we put it in his bowl and it's so cute. It's actually hysterical. We put the food in his bowl and he will not keep it on the mat. Like, he just drags it halfway across the room. That's how much he loves Ollie. And, and I promise you, if your dog got some Ollie, they'd be doing the same thing. So if you want your dog to live a longer, happier, and healthier life, head on over to Ollie.com. Tell them all about your good boy and use the code CHAT. Sports when you check out, and you'll get 60% off your first box of meals when you subscribe today. Head on over to OLLIE.com and enter code CHAT SPORTS to get 60% off your first box. They offer a clean bowl guarantee on their first box, so you're not completely so or if you're not completely satisfied, you can get your money back and your pup can get a free treat. Just kidding. Not that that last part's kind of fake, but definitely a clean bowl guarantee. So check out Ollie. Link is in the comments and description of this video. All right, getting back to the injury report, I'm just going to kind of rifle off the names that are on the Chargers side of things just so that way you guys can understand what's happening here. But it's pretty straightforward as to the Saints side of things. It's pretty much good news. Now, Darius Davis, the wide receiver for the Chargers dealing with a hamstring injury, he did not participate. Will Disley, the tight end, and Hayden Hurst, neither of them participated. Lad McConkey, rookie wide receiver out of Georgia, has a hip issue. He did not participate. Neither did Quentin Johnston, the rookie or the sophomore player out of TCU, and Denzel Perryman also did not participate. But Joey Bosa, a really, really good edge rusher, was a limited participant. He did not play last week, so and I know a lot of Chargers fans, all six of them that exist definitely want him back on the field. DJ Chark dealing with a groin issue. Christian Fulton with a hamstring. Khalil Mack, very talented player. dealing. He just was on a rest day. He was a limited participant. And Jasir Taylor has a fibula injury. He was a limited participant. So pretty much good news for both squads. But when it comes to the New Orleans Saints, they have a conversation to have. Because, uh, because in the next couple of weeks, Derek Carr will be back. Derek Carr spent some time. Throwing earlier this week, he spent a little bit of time getting back in the motion. Now, a reminder, an oblique injury, it's like back, side of your back. Is that right, Tex? It's like kind of like right here. It's right here. Like this is your oblique, and it's Derek Carr's left oblique. So right here is hurting him. So if you're a quarterback, and your whole uh, – your the way you make your money is using your hips, opening up, and throwing. That's That throwing motion was just so disgusting. I'm so sorry I had to see that. But my point being, I don't have my football in studio. Use the mouse, for example. You have to use your oblique to turn, to survey, to then lean into your throws and deliver the pass. Like, my point being, they have a conversation to have between these two quarterbacks and which one they want to start. Dennis Allen saying Spencer Rattler is going to be the starter until Derek Carr is ready to go. But do you think Jake Hayner should get an opportunity? He scored a touchdown, the only touchdown, on Drew Brees' Hall of Fame induction night. What do you think? I'm still leaning Spencer Rattler. I know Jake Hayner had a better game. I'm going to just keep it real with you. You can say he was overhyped in college. No, he wasn't. He literally transferred out of the school that he was hyped up at. And then on top of that, saying he sucked in college. No, just no. He, he was a good quarterback. If you think just if you if you think Spencer Rattler sucks and you think he's a bad college quarterback and you think he sucks now, like just straight up say like don't waste my time, don't waste your time. Just straight up say I don't like Spencer Rattler as a person. I don't want him to succeed. I don't like him. Like just say that. That's not my take. That could be your take. If you hate Spencer Rattler, I'm so sorry to tell you this, but his ceiling is miles higher than Jake Hayner's. And if you disagree, I they just. To say that you're a – just tell me you're a Fresno State fan without telling me you're a Fresno State fan. So let's keep going through the injury report here because with these two quarterbacks, again, I'm not trying to knock Jake Hayner. I just think Rattler's ceiling is much higher. I, I also think with Rattler, he is a 
more mobile quarterback. I think he's a more mobile player. I think that he's a player who can command the offense a little bit better. And I, I do think that when you give him the opportunity to have at least one or two healthy offensive linemen, one or two quality wide receivers, then maybe things can get a little bit better. But where Rattler, where he got a lot of credit was that he was good with a bad offensive line. Sounds like a pretty similar situation in New Orleans. And he hasn't been great. If you think he was terrible his first game, I mean, for God's sake, Spencer Rattler, his first, foot, or his first NFL game, 243 yards, a touchdown and two interceptions. One of those interceptions for the record in garbage time when you're just trying to make something happen. But you have 243 yards in your rookie debut, 172 yards in the second game. Not good by any means, not good. I'm just kind of in the camp of when it comes to this week, why, why throw another wrench in it? There, there's just no point. So I think that Spencer Rattler should be the starter. If you do get Alvin Kamara full, like healthy, which he's dealing with a broken hand, he's dealing with a hip issue, he's dealing with a broken, messed up ribs, not broken ribs, messed up ribs. Like you get him back, you get – like he hasn't had the ability – and, and he – Spencer Rattler has never had uh, – What's his name? Taysom Hill and Chris Olave available. He's also never had the ability to have time in a support system due to a good offensive line. I'm not saying Jake Hayner hasn't had that either. He scored a touchdown with that. But this wide receiver group is just not good. It's not. Nobody's going to succeed. And if you think Jake Hayner is going to give your team a better chance, I'm here to tell you, I'm going to burst your bubble. No, he can't. Nobody could succeed with this unit. Nobody could succeed with a beat-up offensive line. Nobody could do this. But I just want to say this. I think the Saints are okay moving forward. I don't think they need to draft a quarterback next year in the, in the NFL draft. I think that these two players are good enough to have them duke it out, have them have a serious battle, and see what happens. Like, my whole take this entire season has been, we don't know who the winner of the quarterback battle is. Jake Hayner was technically QB2. Spencer Rattler was the emergency third quarterback. So technically for a few weeks, he won it. But then Spencer Rattler just jumped Jake Hayner and got the starts for two straight weeks. So we don't know who won. We, we don't. This is going to be a process that goes for weeks, months, into next season. But to get back on focus with the injury report, all in all, it's some good news. All in all, it's really positive outlooks for the New Orleans Saints this year. The Chargers, they're on a short week. They played Monday night football. The Saints are the exact opposite. They're on a long week. They just played Thursday night football. So they're coming off a miniature bye week, going up against a team that's coming off of a short week. Saints got to take advantage here. Saints got to make something happen when it comes to the injuries and getting healthy. It just has to happen. It's now or never. We got to make this go. All right, so if you want to get some more free Saints videos, 365 days a year, uh, you know what? On leap years, 366. Yeah, I'll do the extra day. Why not? I'll do the extra day. Subscribe today for more Saints videos if you want to get more coverage. And as always, Saints fans, I do appreciate y'all for tuning in. 100% free content. I love doing this. I love getting just to talk ball. Not a lot of graphics. Just kind of wanted to hop on the mic tell you about the injury report. It was breaking news on our live show, so we had to break it all down for you. So Saints fans, y'all stay golden. Be sure to subscribe. Hit me up on social media. We'll see you next time.